Hi and welcome to the grand final, the last recap of Ignite 2019. This is recapping basically day four and five of Ignite. I'm your host, uh, Johan, and with me I have here next to me uh, Floofbert uh, joining in from for Amy. She's on, um, on a mission in uh, a foreign city, um, but I have her with me on uh, Satellite Link. So hello, Amy. Hi, Johan. I need to correct you. I am not in a foreign city. I'm in a very, very, very strange place called New Orleans. <laughs> I am surprised I didn't need a passport to get into this place. And I'm really hoping that I make it out. I'm terrified, but at least I have my computer. I don't know. I don't even know what to say. I feel like a fish out of water here. Anyway. But there is a lot of music, right? There is a lot of music. There was so much bass earlier that the hotel was shaking, and I was wondering how we were going to actually record this video. But it stopped. It stopped exactly at 10 p.m., and now it just kind of sounds like New York City outside. You can hear some traffic, some honking. Um, so, yeah, now it just sounds like a normal sort of busy city kind of thing, and it's not too crazy out there. All right. Back on track. Yes. So, Ignite, what are your thoughts on the on the conference? So, you know that I love Microsoft Ignite. The very first one was in our hometown of Chicago, and that was really the turning point for me in my career. I had definitely mm -hmm. done some amazing things before. Um, I had come to know and love OS deployment and um, config manager. And then I had also worked in change management for a while as well. But Ignite is really what helped me determine what path I'm going to go down and how I'm going to specialize and really open the door to the experts for me. Mm -hmm. So kind of on the expert note, before I get your opinion of Ignite, I wanted to point out something that I came across when I was going through Twitter, uh, through the Ignite thread. And another attendee had actually pointed out Ignite is actually, or Microsoft is actually offering um, a free certification to attendees who can prove with their login credentials. So whatever account you use to register as an attendee for Ignite, you can actually use that account to um, sign up for a certification. So I'm going to cool. pull up the link. Um, so if you look at my screen, you'll see it says Microsoft Ignite and Ignite the Tour free certification exam offer. So basically you'll follow the link. You'll have to authenticate, like I said, with the registration account that you used. And um, I'm not going to read every exam that's listed on this page, but there are several exams that are available for you to take as well. So you can apply the knowledge that you learned at the workshop that you attended. Um, like if you went to a pre-day workshop or the sessions that you went to throughout the week, or maybe this is something you've been studying for for a while and you brushed up on your skills through your networking and through your attendance and sessions during the week, or maybe you're inspired after the conference to go home and take your career to the next level via certification. Um, this is how you do it and it's free. So that's really, really amazing, but you only have six months to um, register and take the test. So make sure you do oh. it right away. Awesome. Yep. Awesome. So tell me, what did you think of Ignite? So um, I was uh, I was skimming through the uh, uh, sessions on both uh, Thursday and Friday, and there were obviously four or five hundred sessions that that like, all right, this is a lot. So I, I picked out of five of them and I watched through them, and I summarized a few highlights um, from, especially from a session with uh, Jason Giffens and and Rob York, and that was the. Um, uh, endpoint manager uh, session, um, but before diving into it, sort of what that session covered, uh, is there anything you would like to to add or mention around uh, that solution as a, as a whole or as a, as a concept? Yeah, I actually wanted to take a step back from that even and mention, as you had said, there's so many sessions to go through. We're only highlighting a couple. There is actually a community right. script that's available for you to go back um, and re-download or not re-download, to actually download the sessions mm -hmm. from this year's Ignite, and you can grab yeah. um, the slide decks as well That if the speakers yeah. have made those available. This is a great yeah. resource for you to take back home. Maybe you sat in that session and you learned so much that you needed to hear it again, or you missed it because there were too many sessions to choose from at the same time, or you just needed a break or whatever. Um, I have it pulled up on my screen. 
So it's actually super easy to Bing or Google for. You would just say Microsoft Ignite download script um, tech community, and it'll be like the first or second link. Um, but you just download yeah, uh, PowerShell script. There's some syntax for how to use it as well. Um, so, yeah, download the sessions and go from there. Yeah, I, I also I just noticed today I missed I totally missed it before, or they just added it today. I'm not sure. They actually posted a link to to a download script on the act, each and every video as well. Really? Um, yeah, on the Tech Minute site, uh, just next to the transcript. I, I'm not sure if it's been there before, but uh, so it, it looks like it's kind of the same script because it followed similar syntax. But anyhow, good stuff there. Awesome. Yeah. So lots yeah. of options for you to download the videos. In the past, they've had uh, just plain download links um, from previous Ignites. So I don't know if they're looking to the community to find a better way to do to do the downloads. But either way, you have ways to download the videos now. So that's yeah, really great. You can upload them to your local Plex server, and you can have family and friends over for you know Friday night. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That's awesome. So right. I don't know if you know or if the attendees know, Windows 7 is end of life pretty soon. It's actually a little bit more than 60 days right now on That's November 10th. Scary. Yeah. So it's January 14, 2020. I remember the first time I heard that date, I was like, oh, that's so far away. Like, mm -hmm. we'll be fine. <laughs> yep. It is January 14, 2020, and I still see XP devices out in the wild. <laughs> So I'm a little bit concerned for some organizations. I think that maybe some, those organizations are also feeling some concern. There is an option to buy servicing on that as well. Um, so if you're one of those organizations who's like, we know that we're not going to make the deadline, you can kind of unlock oh. Windows 7 updates for you in the future, but it is going to cost you money. Um, a lot of money. A yeah. lot of money, yeah. yeah. So now that we have right. that, announcement out of the way um geez this ignite really was the ignite for our favorite products was it not it was it was so the whole endpoint manager i like to call it the suite but it's it's really basically uh, you you take config manager you take intune you take desktop analytics you take defender atp mm -hmm. and you take autopilot and you just smush it together in, in, uh, in the large solution. That's basically what it is. But what, what surprised me the most is, is how much the focus was on, on a cloud, cloud attachments this year, again, and even more visible on, on the benefits of doing so. So give an example. Today, Config Manager can absolutely tell you, for example, how your machines are doing on boot times. That's been added since a few versions back through CMP, but you can figure out what the boot times are in your environment, etc. But you cannot get a comparison to other companies. That's something you get to the cloud integration, where Microsoft, through their telemetry info, through all the information they have in their backend from other information they have, now you can get like, all right, how your environment compares to like the average or, or stuff like that. And same goes for application compatibility. A config manager or Intune for that matter can absolutely tell you what apps you have. Uh, config man a little bit better than Intune on that, but it, it doesn't basically inventory of stuff. But they won't tell you whether they work or not work with, say, uh, Windows 10 1903. Mm -hmm. That information can also be powered in from the cloud. And uh, even with the new cloud based console, I was just blown away how quickly in real time from a web console you have access not only to your PCs but to all your devices even config managed devices alone um, that you haven't enrolled yet in, into Intune. And you can do real-time queries, you can do real-time inventory, you can run CM Pivot and, and ask all these questions. So there is no database up in, in, in Azure for, for those devices. It's actually real time. And it was even though it was like over internet, it was still pretty darn quick. Uh, same as application installs, like help desk can just find the device, find a few apps they have, right click and say install and it happens basically instantly on that device. Another thing I found that was like, wow, I don't know sure if you remember, but back in the Vista time frame, Microsoft added in reliability history into Windows where you can see like the behavior of the machine since it was deployed, what happened and yada yada. That is now on the timeline in the web console. 
So when you, you as a help desk, when you go into the device, you actually see exactly what happened. Uh, like, all right, this date, the user installed an update. This date, an application crashed. This date, a user locked the device or stuff like that. So it's very easy for help to follow and, and sort of track what's going on. I thought that was really cool to see that yeah. in like an all all time view or single pane for, for all that info. Good stuff. Yeah, it's really incredible the change that we're seeing now. I was just watching um, the session code is DEP20. Um, it's the, I'll read off the extremely long title, uh, Modern Windows 10 and Office 365 Deployment with Windows Autopilot, Desktop Analytics, and Microsoft Endpoint Manager. Congratulations, you guys. By the way, you win the award for longest session title. But it's with some of our favorites from the product team, um, such as June and Zach and Narkis from the DO team and um, Niehaus as well. Um, and they had some customers on stage and another uh, couple people from Microsoft joining as well. But anyway, the point that I'm getting at is that um, I feel like this session really summarized kind of the whole point of Ignite and all the changes that we're seeing. First of all, um, when Dune first came on the stage and showed us how we make the shift when we get home, and that's enabling co-management. And the fact that it unlocks things that we've never really been able to do before, and that's having a single pane of glass to manage all the endpoints and to make decisions for all of our endpoints and run real-time actions against them. Um, for example, before, there was no way to see your Windows 7 assets in Intune. Intune was for Windows 10. Um, you can also see server assets in Intune as well. And now you can see whether devices are completely MDM managed, if they're co-managed with Config Manager and Intune, or if they're just simply managed by Config Manager. But either way, you can use that Config Manager fast channel if it's co-managed or if it's just Config Manager managed. Right click, for example, on that um, Windows 7 device and trigger a machine policy or a user policy um, just like you would within the con Config Manager console. But you're doing it in what used to be the Intune portal that's now been um, rebranded for um, Endpoint Manager. So again, you're, you, you're seeing your, the, your entire real estate and, and you're able to manage it. And that's super exciting. So, yeah. Thoughts? Uh, no, I'm super excited as well. I had no idea it was also covering Windows 7 devices. I, I only seen and talked about Windows 10 stuff, but it's uh, it's cool that they supported the, the legacy as well. But I really like the server that you can also do this for for servers. I had no idea about that either. I've only been focused on on the Windows 10 stuff for for that. Yeah, so and cool, and cool things. I'm sure you know as this starts to roll out, I think there's some concern of hey, you know, I I don't want people who are working in Intune to be able to see my servers? Am I going to be able to create granular access? I'm sure Microsoft has thought of that, so you don't have to worry when this goes live. It's not going to just be a free-for-all. It'll be <laughs> well thought out, and you'll be able to manage your devices the way that you want to manage it. Um, it's just that none of us can see it, so I can't tell you exactly what it's going to look like yet because they've kept it pretty quiet even to the MVPs. Yep, indeed. So another session I stumbled across was uh, a session that focused on Windows 10, um, the security changes that are, are, are happening and how much work Microsoft is doing on the sort of virtualization based type security. So there was a session by um, David Weston that covered the new concept of secured core PC, which is basically just a, I wouldn't say fancy name, but a, a name or framework for using modern hardware to together with virtualization based technology to isolate items uh, in Windows uh, to, to increase uh, security further. For example, taking UFI and maybe not trusting it, but have like a second companion from, from another uh, hardware component and during boot and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. uh, if you haven't seen that session, I highly recommend watching it. That was uh, a lot, a lot that I, I haven't stumbled across before in, in terms of how much in Windows 10 is actually using this already. So that was cool. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, Zach had covered a little bit about really how desktop analytics is able to um, 
provide information like this as well. So that's something that's still in that DEP 20 session that I was talking about. So I recommend that you watch the whole session um, so that you can really understand what the desktop analytics team is doing as well to help provide that information, um, including deployment plans. So you kind of get a project plan within that solution um, to target devices, to get information about the devices. What decisions should I make about them? Should I even bring them to Windows 10? Um, if they're on Windows 7, or should I keep them in the environment um, moving to the next feature update as well? You can also get um, patch reporting like you would get out of WSUS or Config Manager. So what patch level am I at? Um, How many devices are properly patched um, based on the settings that I have in my organization? So that's pretty cool. Um, But I have to tell you something I mean, I keep going back to the session, um, but it was like kind of everything all in one. Um, Because your roots are in OSD um, professionally, as well as in the community, Michael Niehaus introduced autopilot um, in a really interesting way this time. I think that kind of maybe the first time autopilot was introduced, I I think that it scared a lot of people that it was replacing OSD. And then we heard, no, no, no. Autopilot isn't a replacement for OSD. It's just a way to bring new devices under management. And I have to tell you that in this session, Autopilot was introduced as a way to get rid of traditional OS deployment. So that's a little bit terrifying (laughs) to hear. I I think where it came from, because the the Config Manager team recently announced that uh, upcoming releases, you will be able to launch sequences as part of your um, sort of autopilot integration. Or when autopilot kicks in, um, you can launch a sequence. So that when the machine is, is starting to be you know, enrolled and uh, boarded uh, into the platform, you can now kick off a sequence that, that will do things. Yeah. So, yeah. So this yeah. is. The, when Autopilot was first introduced, it was more of a user-driven experience. Um, yes. The user logs in, and the device downloads a profile and settings, and then the Intune yeah. admin pushes out applications. And I think Nihao said um, when it's user-driven, it takes about 20 minutes from first boot to um, applying the device settings, and then the user logs in, and depending on what applications are deployed to it, it might take a little bit longer than 20 minutes to get all the ap- applications, but you can at least log yeah. in and start being productive within yeah. about 20 minutes if everything goes well. Um, so with the white glove experience, um, fear not all you traditional OSD lovers, this is a way for you to grab that device and unbox it and breathe all over it and eat your lunch on it and get it really messy and then clean it up and hand it off to the end user um, for them to log in for the first time. I joke because one of my first jobs was doing kind of that um, depot style um, device swap where I would get the end user's password. I would um, <laughs> I would first of all put a hard drive in that had been um, imaged via ghost. So uh, going really far back now and um, log in for the user, install all, all of their applications, copy over all of their files. Um, it was really kind of messy. And while not all of that happens, especially not that deployment mechanism happening anymore, at least I hope it's not happening anymore, there's still a lot of things that you have to do to get a new device to an end user, whether it be a replacement or a new PC or even a loaner. And there really is a lot of manual work that Microsoft is taking out of the way, such as the need for gathering drivers or the need to get the end user's password to even set things up for them, um, for them to be able to be productive. Um, I think starting with the latest version of Office, even the email signatures are starting to sync over. And that's something that I've noticed because I re-imaged this laptop. Um, I saw a link, um, it was actually saved in my user profile that was my custom signature that I had set up when I first logged in. Um, so it, while it's kind of sad to see parts of OS deployment dying, it's nice that I don't have to do things like chase the user down for their password or remind them to change it um, after I give them the device back or worry, you know, did I copy everything that they needed when I have OneDrive now that can sync those files and settings for me? Um, 
So it's hard to let go, but it's really good to see that there's a really well thought out um, process for this going forward. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, I did see a session around uh, language packs that I highly recommend you to <laughs> look into as well. It uh, was done by Sudhagar, or Suda, as he's being called. Yeah, our friend Suda. Uh, from Microsoft. Uh -huh. Yes. And it's basically highlighting more or less all the common issues companies are running into in terms of language packs and what Microsoft are doing in the future to fix them. Suda basically promised in the session is that in, in five years' time, language pack problems will be gone. I was like, all right, cool. Uh, but what we're doing already now in 20H1, meaning uh, the, the spring release 2020 of uh, Windows 10, is they removing or basically changing so that when you set, say, Swedish as a UI language, it will set it as system, but it will not set it as install. And that is basically what's been causing all these problems when we try to do an in-place upgrade mm -hmm. and we're going to say, hey, wrong language and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And there is also a new DISM command to allow you to, to set that as well. So yeah. I recommend seeing that session. It was a good one. That's really uh, shiny. And it's funny you mentioned language packs because Narkis had mentioned in my favorite DEP20 session that it's in preview right now, but um, last... Microsoft, or last Ignite, Microsoft had announced that um, the Office 365 updates were going to be available via delivery optimization, meaning you download them once, and then they could be shared peer-to-peer -peer across your organization using DO, which is Microsoft's cloud-managed sort of peer-to-peer -peer, um, solution. Now, yeah. they are, um, it's in preview, they're including setup and language packs. Nice, nice, nice. So, so anything else? Uh, from, from Ignite, or are you are you ready to go on to what you are doing this week? Yeah, so um, I think that I've covered enough of my favorite session before I bore everyone. Um, I am actually at um, MMS Jazz, which is the Midwest Management Summit. It originally started off, well, it has a pretty long history, but the MMS that we know now typically is just once a year at the Mall of America in Minnesota in May, and they have started doing these... Um, smaller conferences so if you can't get approval to go um, to the main conference you can still come another time of year um, but these second conferences they do all over the u.s so this year it's in new orleans so i got a chance to catch up with some friends that we know and love in the community um such as michael nystrom so michael and i have committed to doing some recap videos here at mms It'll be a little bit nice. more difficult to do recaps uh because these um, sessions aren't recorded, um, so you kind of have to be here to really, um, really fully get the full benefit of the conference. But there will definitely be some, definitely be some um, information that we can share, and hopefully that'll help you uh, present to your manager why you should get approval to come to the conference. But I also got to sit down with a good friend named Jan, and I have his Twitter profile pulled up um, for two reasons. One, because I totally think that more people should follow him. I think that he's a great, <laughs> uh, no, I'm being serious because I think that he's a great resource for organizations that are looking at taking that first step into the, what we'll call into the unknown. If you've been hundred percent on-prem and you're worried about the security, impl the security Im implications of going to a cloud driven solution. Um, Jan is extremely knowledgeable and, um, helping walk you through that and help you really understanding what, um, we'll call it lockdown options that you have to secure your environment um, so that you can rest assured that this journey that you're going on doesn't have to be as scary as you might think that it is. So he's definitely a good person to reach out to. I've, we talked for at least an hour on this topic. Um, he's very cool. passionate about it as well. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, stay tuned um, this next week for updates from me and Michael. Um, but Johan, I know that you had something that you wanted to share as well. Yeah, I, I, I promised a big announcement and it might not be a big announcement for the world, but it's a big announcement for me personally. And I just wanted to share that as of as of now, I have joined uh, Two Pint Software as a hey, technical fellow. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know that company? Yeah, it's the company like right here. That's cool yeah. stuff. So I'm, I'm super excited to work with Amy, Phil and Andreas. <laughs> going forward and, and helping develop those solutions and support them and 
yeah everything around it super super excited so, super shiny and on behalf yes. of all of the team so happy <laughs> that you've joined so that's super great and we'll have to get you your own custom unicorn as well yes so that Floofart yes of course have yeah. a friend yeah that's uh, required <laughs> exactly <laughs> so all right Th that being said thank you all for for staying with us this this week it's been amazing and amy anything you would like to add thank you so much for watching mm -hmm. and definitely stay tuned for more videos and we will see you next time all right bye bye